Greetings, everyone. Uh, I go by the name of Magtain, aka Mr. Champagne Knights, aka the African Fresh Prince, aka the Alumni Group, aka the Brand Association Master himself. So, um, I'm basically here today to talk about a few things, you know. Um, people always say if you want something done right, you do it yourself. So I'm going to be interviewing myself <laughs> on a day like this and see how that goes. Um, so just a few questions people have been asking me and I wanted to get to them today. About the project that's coming, about everything we're doing, about everything the team's been doing, where McTain is going as a brand, as a business, as just a all-around creative and uh, <clears throat> a lot of people, I think, might not even know who McTain is. And we're here to discuss that today. Who is McTain? And honestly, I'll say McTain is just a, an exaggeration of everything that's real about myself, about where I'm from, and about everything that I feel. Because... As we all know, a true story needs to be told, but it needs to be told in a way that's entertaining as well. And I feel that's everything that McTain is, just an exaggeration of everything that's real about me. Uh, some of the other questions people have been asking is, where am I from? This is one of the more difficult questions to answer, honestly speaking, because I never know what that means. Does it mean where you were born? where your mother's from or where your father's from? Everybody feels differently. So we're just going to break it up into those three um, I've spent most of my time in Bloomtown. I read Bloomtown to the death of me, 05 till I die. So I'm a Bloomtown resident. Um, but my mother is from Lesotho and that's where I was born. That's where the family on her side of the family is from. Uh, my dad is from Rwanda in East Africa. That's where that side of the family is from. So mixed blood in me. Uh, moving on. Uh, where did your love for music begin? Hmm, where did my love for music begin? I would have to put that on my older brother, honestly speaking. I remember driving around, you know, all the way. We used to go to the same school and used to drive us there. And the music he would be playing, a lot of DMX, a lot of Eminem, a lot of Dr. Dre, a lot of, you know, um, the Tupacs, the Nas, all of those back in the day. And that's what influenced me to make the music I'm making now. Uh, the next question being, what is fear? What comes next? That's the name of the project I'm going to be dropping. It's a mixtape. Um, the reason I titled it fear, what comes next? I've always felt the most dangerous thing a person can do is to know themselves. And once a person knows themselves, you need to be, they need to be feared. Because once you know yourself, you can't be taken advantage of, you understand? If you look at marketing, if you look at the media, everything they're feeding us, people can only take advantage of you if you don't know yourself. Because I can convince you to be a certain person, you need to buy a certain designer bag, to be a certain person, you need to drive a certain car. But if you know who you are, you don't need anybody else to confirm it, then you need to be feared. And that's why I titled the project Fear What Comes Next because I think I'm at a place now where I understand who McTain is and therefore niggas need to be afraid of what's coming next with this project. Niggas need to understand what I'm about to do is change the way you guys view Bloomtown. And I'm hoping to change the way Bloomtown people view Bloomtown as well, what we can be capable of. And that's why I titled the project Fear What Comes Next. Um, the second part of that is also the album is coming soon. So the mixtape is like an interlude to the album. And that's why Fear What Comes Next works as a title as well. Because once the mixtape drops, then comes the album. And when I do that, oh man, it's over for you niggas. It's over for you niggas. Uh, the next question being, what do I want to achieve with this project? Honestly, this is like a reintroduction of, of who I am and where I am right now as an artist. Because my last project was probably about three, four years ago when I was still on Green Fairy Music. And I'm a completely different artist now. So Fear What Comes Next is a reintroduction of who McTain is. And just like I was speaking about with the title, I'm at a point in my career where I am feared by my peers and the people around me because I finally understand what needs to be done and what I need to do with my music. 
And I just want to take you on a journey of discovering myself, how I got to this point now where I say I know who McTain is and I know what he's supposed to do. And that's why fear what comes next is so important. That's why this needs to be done right now. So I hope you guys enjoy the music once it drops. Another question a lot of people have been asking me is what's my biggest challenge in music? And I'm going to be honest with you guys, the biggest challenge I've had is my own personality. I am learning every day that because I'm such an introvert, because I rather stick to myself and not necessarily brag about the things I've done, it's held my career back. Especially in hip hop where it feels like every day you have to remind niggas, this is what I've done. This is what I do. This is what I've done. This is what I do. And for someone like me who releases the music, does the shows, changes the game and then just chills and falls back, it's, it's worked against me, you know. So that's why I feel like I've been slept on for so long because I don't actively go out and tell people this is what I bring to the table every single day. And it's something I've been working on. It's something that's helped me change my approach even in social media. I'm terrible. I am terrible at social media. But it's something I've been working on. We've been dropping freestyles every single week. Squid, myself, and Steezy. Dropping visuals every single week, whether freestyle, whether voiceover video, just to remind niggas, this is who I am and this is what I do. And that's been my biggest challenge in music. Another question um, that I got, shout out to Sandman. Um, he's the one who brought up this question. Who do I make music for? And I'm just going to keep it real simple. I make music for real people. I think we live in a time now where a lot of niggas are making music for people that don't exist. Everybody is the hardest gangster out there. Everybody's the hardest thug. Everybody's the richest person in the world. And it's like, it feels like we're making music for like the one percenters of the world. And everybody else is just left to almost want to, you know, glamorize and look at these people and hope that they can achieve those levels. And I feel like I make music for the everyday people. I make music for the nigga with the nine to five. I make music for the student. I make music for the niggas hustling on the streets. You know, I make music for the niggas who get all the girls and the niggas who don't. You know, I've been in both situations. I know what it's like. I make music for the niggas who, who, who finish school. I make niggas for, for the people. I make music for the niggas who dropped out as well. You understand? So I try to narrow the lanes of almost making music for the everyday people. I make music for the niggas who live in Bloomtown. I make music for the niggas who live outside of town as well. So I just really make music for real people. People don't make music for real people anymore. We're making music for imaginary people that don't exist, you know? And it's led to a, a decay in society, if you ask me, where people that we think have made it never come back to us to tell us, Asian fan, it's not what you think it's like on the other side. <laughs> everybody's acting like they made it. You know, everybody's living life with an Instagram filter and it's like, I feel like we need time where there's no filter. So consider me the hashtag no filter challenge of music. That's what I make music for. Another question that's been popping up is what is Champagne Nights? Everybody keeps hearing about the Champagne Nights. And honestly, I'm just going to break it down as one thing. Champagne Nights is an experience. It's an experience that can come to you in different ways. We do live shows. We do wine tasting events. We do music. Um, hopefully we're going to get into merch as well and other things moving forward. But Champagne Nights is an experience. It's a luxurious experience for the everyday people. What we're doing in Champagne Nights is we're combining wine culture with hip hop and street culture. Something I've never seen done in Bloomtown before. Something you've never seen being done in Bloomtown before. And it's it's been a long journey to try and achieve it. We had our first event 2020, um, February the 16th at Shotgun Bistro. Shout out to everybody who showed up. Um, and we ho can hopefully continue to have more events moving forward. And the Champagne Nights is also not just one person, it's a team. It's a team of people, of creatives. So I have a live band that performs at every one of these shows, also titled Champagne Nights. I got Gershwin, 
Um, I got Donald, I got Moise, I got Reba, I got Sandman, you know, and that's basically the team I'm working with, Sandman, working on our production, our sound engineer. We have Donald on the keys, nobody plays them like he does. We got Moise on the strings, our lead guitarist. We have Gershon on the drums, nobody kills it like he does. You've probably seen a couple of these guys uh, performing with Simple Stories as well. And then we have Reba on the vocals. She is our amazing vocalist. Big Re, what up? Big Re, what up? And that's who we are as Champagne Knights. And we hope to give you guys more if this lockdown would allow though. But uh, yeah, man, there is nothing like Champagne Nights out right now. Uh, there will never be anything like Champagne Nights, even if people try to copy it. And uh, I, pre I appreciate those people who've been following us and supporting us to where we're at now. Yeah. And then obviously people want to know who I worked with on this project. Um, so the, pro the two producers I worked with was Sandman, Squid. Oh, not to mention Cask Acid himself. Shout out to Cask Acid. So yeah. Those are the three people I worked on with this project. And honestly, I wanted to drop the mixtape and the album at the same time. But as we're recording the mixtape, I realized something that, yo, I'm getting better at this. I'm getting better at the songwriting. I'm getting better at the rapping. Squid is getting better at the production. Sandman's getting better with the production. Squid is getting better with, with the videos as well that we're doing leading up to the project. And I said, I feel like we can do even better than we're doing now if we uh, give ourselves the time, but we need to give the people the music as well. So that's why we're going to be dropping the mixtape, Fear What Comes Next, and then we're just going to get even better for the album. And yeah, that's honestly what's happening. Maintain or drop a name. When, are, when can we expect Fear What Comes Next? And I don't want to give exact dates, but I'm going to say we dropping in August. We're coming for the game in August. And all I can say is Fear what's coming next yeah this is not working now